Hello, my name is Todd Baginski. I'm an 11 times SharePoint MVP and a partner and CTO at my company, Canvas. In this training module, I'm going to show you how to get started with the SharePoint Framework. This is section one of the Getting Started with SharePoint Framework training module. In this section, I will discuss the basic React web part structure. In this section, we're going to discuss how to create a React web part, the structure, the basic template you get when you create a React web part, and then how to extend the solution. To create a React web part, you start with the Yeoman SharePoint generator. You issue the command line yo space at Microsoft slash SharePoint. This starts the Yeoman generator. Once the Yeoman generator starts, you'll configure the web part information, such as the name of the web part and where you'd like it to be stored on your file system. Then you'll select the React framework. You can see that in the bottom screenshot here where React has been selected. After you do that, all you have to do is hit the enter button and the Yeoman generator will scaffold your project for you. After the project has been created, you can open it up in an editor of your choice. Here's an example of where the project has been opened in Visual Studio Code. This was a simple web part I created called Hello World Web Part React. I created this web part using the process I showed you on the previous slide. Some of the important top level folders that you'll notice that are created are as follows. The config folder. This includes all configuration files used in the web part project. The SRC or source folder. This is the main folder of the project. It includes the web part, all the styles you're going to use, and a test file right out of the box. You also have your typings folder. This includes some type definition files. However, most type definition files are installed in the node underscore modules slash at and then the types folder when you actually install them via NPM. If you'd like to have a more detailed look at some of the other folders and files in the system, I suggest you look at the other training modules I've recorded about SharePoint Framework. A couple key files to know without diving deep into many different config files and things like that is just the web part class and the main component that comes in a React web part. You can see in the top screenshot the hello world react web part.ts file is selected. This is the class that defines the main entry point for the web part. In the bottom screenshot you can see the hello world react.tsx file is selected. This is the main React component that has been wired up by default with the Yeoman generator. This component renders and returns the main element that is displayed inside of the web part when it is rendered to the screen. To extend the solution, you can do things like adding the Office UI Fabric component package, for instance, and I will talk about that in subsequent training modules. To do that, you would run npm space i space office dash ui dash fabric dash react space dash dash save. When you do that, it will download the office ui fabric component package, put it on your machine, and then after installation is done, it'll update the package.json file, as you can see in the screenshot here, to indicate that the office ui fabric react component was installed. The Office UI Fabric component package allows you to work with different styles that create controls and make your web part look just like it would in Office 365 had it been built by Microsoft. Now I'm going to take you on a brief demo of the basic React web part structure. The project that I'm going to take you through here can be found in the Module 6 Demos Exercise 1 Hello World Web Part React folder in the GitHub repository with all this other training content. 
This project was actually created in the Getting Started with the SharePoint Framework, Module 1. You can find the instructions to that in the lab manual for Module 1. To create this web part, it's simply using the Omen generator, selecting all default values for the configuration of the web part, and then choosing the React framework. The Omen generator then scaffolds this project that I have open right here. We can see the config file, the SRC file, and the typings file that I talked about before. If I dig down into my SRC folder here, I can then go into Web Parts, Hello World React, and show you some of the more interesting files and the things that you will use all the time. If we go into the Components folder, this is the React component that comes with the Web Part out of the box. This one right here, hello world react.tsx, is the container component for the web part. It returns an element. This is the element that it returns that will be rendered to the screen. The hello world react.module.scss file right here, this contains all the various styles that are used in the web part. The iHelloWorldReactProps.ts in the components folder here defines the interface for the React component properties. HelloWorldReactWebPart.ts down here is the main web part script file. HelloWorldReactWebPart.Manifest.json right here contains configuration information for the web part including the version, title, description, etc. I hello world react web part props.ts defines the main interface for the web part properties. I'd like to show you an example on how you can extend this web part after you've got it created with the Yeoman generator. What I'm going to do here is install the Office UI Fabric so then I could write some code to work with the Office UI Fabric, which I'll do in the next section of this training module. So I switch to the command prompt window in the integrated terminal down here at the bottom of Visual Studio Code. And then I ran npm install to install the components for this particular web part. Notice in the package.json file, there is no dependency right now listed for the Office UI framework. So to install it, I'm going to run the command npm i Office UI fabric-react-save. This is going to go out to Node Package Manager, grab the Office UI fabric react component, and install it into my web part project. Here you can see this taking place. Once the operation is complete, notice the package.json file now shows the Office UI Fabric React component has been downloaded and installed into my project. I can then to proceed to start coding against the Office UI Fabric Core. This is what I'll do in the next training section. In summary, in this module, we discussed how to create a React web part, the structure of the basic template, and how to extend the solution. You can learn more about SharePoint Framework and all the things we've talked about here in the SharePoint Patterns and Practices. You can get to this via the URL aka.ms slash SharePoint PNP. There's a ton of code samples and solutions, reusable components, a lot of guidance documentation, and also monthly community calls that you can watch here to learn all about the SharePoint Framework, SharePoint Add-ins, Microsoft Graph, and Office 365 APIs.